Hello and welcome to another episode of Fix Slices and Deep Cuts. Uh, today I will be ranking the discography of a band uh, that personally I love very much. Uh, uh, it, this is that band. If you can read this, that says Gore Guts. This says Gore Guts. Uh, this is a classic death metal band uh, that I got into way back in high school. Uh, and, you know, they, they started out as your traditional classic death metal band, and I'll get to that even more in a little bit, but they've evolved into so much more. Um, it's almost a shame that their band name is this because they're so evolved. Uh, and much like, you know, this is a name similar to Cannibal Corpse, well, Cannibal Corpse, you kind of know what you're getting. You know, they've kind of boxed themselves in with that name. Well, you would think Orguts would have done the same thing, but they have not. They have completely evolved into this progressive, avant-garde, experimental, ever-changing uh, uh, entity of a band. So they are uh, incredible. They have uh, five full lengths and uh, one EP, but the EP is almost as long as a full length. So I'm going to rank that, too. So we're going to rank six things total. Um, thank you. Just in case you don't know how much they mean to me, they're on my coffee mug of fame. See that, that logo right there? Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? There's my old band time board. That's my uh, heavy mug. This is my prog mug. I love progressive music and heavy music. I, I, put, I put Opeth on the prog one, not the heavy one. Face warning. Anyway, so, uh, so Gorguts, I've, I've loved them since high school. They came out in the classic era. Um, you know, what else can we say? This is basically Luke LeMay's band. So, uh, again, from Sherbrooke, Quebec, not too far, somewhere between Montreal and the border with Vermont. But uh, anyway, uh, so we'll, we'll just get right into it. Lots to say. Tough to rank the bottom three. I pretty much knew my top three. I knew the order of my top three, but the bottom three was going to be tough. Um, and uh, so we'll just get right to it. Uh, coming in at number six, uh, this is an excellent album. We're listening to it right now. Uh, I've got from 2001, I have their fourth album, uh, From Wisdom to Hate. And this is the title track. Just so technical, cool patterns, strange melodies. Uh, very unusual at all times. Uh, basically a trademark of bands from Quebec, it seems. Whether it's Voivod or even uh, Early Cataclysm or uh, a band I used to like called Oblivion. There are tons of others, but uh, uh, at any rate, uh, this is uh, their last, their fourth album and their last album for 12 years. They basically were on hiatus for some time. Um, the lineup here is obviously Luke LeMay on guitars and vocals, and he does the majority of the songwriting, as always. Uh, but here you've got um, Daniel Mongrain is the other guitar player. Well, who's Daniel Mongrain? Well, he played in a band in Quebec called Martyr, but he is also the uh, guitar player now in Voivod, which is a great thing. You, you think Piggy could not be replaced in Voivod. Well, Daniel Mongrain has done it. Uh, but before he was in Voivod, he was in Martyr, and he was also on this album for Gore Guys. Um, also, you have, uh, I guess you've got Steve McDonald on drums. It sounds good to me. This is the only album, I believe, that he was the drummer on in the studio. Um, Steve Cloutier on bass, he was on two albums in the studio, and this is the second of those two. Um, I dig this. This is a... Uh, I'll get to the album that came out before this in a bit, but this is more of what I would say, and I can't believe I'm saying this, maybe a more accessible version of that album. The album before this was excellent, but it was very dense, very out there, very avant-garde, very even more brutal than this. Uh, and it was a lot longer. I think that album was an hour. This is 40 minutes. You know, you've got eight songs, 40 minutes. Uh, just all the rhythmic patterns and just all the riffing and just all the sequences and just all the original, unique, you know, styles that they employ on this is just typical of a Gorgitz album. In fact, this is ranked sixth, but this is an excellent album. Gorgitz does not ever put out anything that isn't good. Um, 
Uh, the Quest for Equilibrium is a little slower. It's got some atmosphere to it. Um, Inverted is the opening track, the Through Mythos. A lot of these are just really good. It's a lot of blasting and thrashing and uh, mid-paced technicality, uh, elusive treasures. Uh, just lots of good stuff on here. Um, I rank it sixth, but this might be a decent album to start with if you're not familiar with the band, just because it's technical, but it's a little more approachable. It's not quite as harsh, or it's not quite as avant-garde as some of their other stuff. Um, and uh, also, this is their fourth album. This is what I would call their second of three phases or three eras so far. So their first two albums were what I would call the classic death metal era in the, the first phase. Uh, this is the second of what I would call the second phase. Um, and this is on Olympic recordings. This is uh, what I would call more of their, their avant-garde experimental phase for sure. Uh, and then they have a third phase, which they're in right now, which is avant-garde, but different from this, in a way. So they, they have three distinctive phases, and this is in the, uh, the second phase. So, But uh, it, coming in at number six, I've got their fourth album from 2001. I have uh, From Wisdom to Hate. Uh, okay, coming in at number five. Uh, this is their most recent release. It's actually an EP from 2016. It's called Pleadies Dust. And what an album cover that is. Uh, this is one 33-minute track. One track, 33 minutes. Um, I think it's broken down into six or seven parts, technically. But I feel like it goes into three phases. It basically goes for about nine or ten minutes each. All these frantic uh, pieces that kind of connect, and there are these breakdowns. Two breakdowns so it separates it to me into about three more gigantic pieces but you've got uh, by the way there's the man himself mr. Luke LeMay one two three four anyway there he is mr. Luke LeMay love that guy what a vision what a visionary right um, Kevin Huffnagel this is the current lineup um, there's the full band just Colin Marston, Patrice Hamlin. Um, you know, basically, this is uh, continuing in the same vein of the album before it. Uh, Pleiades Dust, it centers around basically the Golden Age, which is, which was in, uh, you know, I, I think it was in Baghdad. I wanted to say Persia, but I believe the Golden Age, and this was like the 14th century, so the 13, 1400s, was in Baghdad, what is currently known as Baghdad. Um, and they had all the knowledge at that time. So while the while Europe was going through, you know, the, the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages, and plague and everything else in Europe, uh, you know, Iraq and Persia, that part of the world was actually experiencing a golden age. Uh, and they had all the knowledge. They had all the libraries with all the mathematics and, and everything else that at that time was so advanced. Had the answers to lots of uh, things that we take for granted now. Um, and so this deals with the story of how they had, they were in the Golden Age, and it was, I believe, the Mongols. I think it was the Mongols. It could have been Attila the Hun. I think it was the Mongols, though. They came in all the way from Asia and basically just pillaged and destroyed it all. And uh, word has it, you know, that the, the rivers ran black with ink from all the texts that were burned and thrown in the river. So you had all this knowledge, and then you had these thugs from another land that came in and just pillaged the whole town. And for what? But that is the history of mankind right there. Um, so just a fascinating story to go with such awesome, uh, unique, original avant material. Um, but uh, I, I am a big fan of this. I'm ranking it fifth, but I'm really just ranking it fifth because it's their shortest thing. It's considered an EP. And plus, uh, as I know what my top three are, I'm just kind of strategically placing these, you know, six, five, and four in a, in a fashion, which I'll reveal uh, at the end. But, uh, you know, so these drawings are kind of a hint at, you know, sort of the, the architecture and the mathematical design of the, the knowledge that you had in the 13 and 1400s in, uh, you know, in, the, in Baghdad and Persia and that part of the world. Just a cool album. I mean, look, listen to these songs. Thinkers Slumber, Wandering Times, 
Within the Rounded Walls, Pearls of Translation, uh, Compendiums, Stranded Minds on the Shores of Doubt, and Besieged. So it's just really good stuff. Big fan of uh, their latest EP from 2016 on Season of Mist Records, uh, Pleiades Dust. Uh, and that is coming in at number five. Okay, coming in at number four. Yes, I'm holding up a cassette tape. This is their uh, debut album from 1991. It's uh, Considered Dead. Yes, that's the name of the album. The album is called Considered Dead. Uh, this is classic death metal. Um, by the way, I do have it on CD. It's just that the CD I have is uh, one of Roadrunner Records uh, releases, uh, re-releases called Two from the Vault. So I do have it on CD, but here it is on cassette. And this is how I learned to enjoy it when I was a, uh, a teenager in high school. Um, it doesn't get more classic death metal than this. Uh, I did a whole podcast on 1991 death metal. Well, this was released in 1991. It is pure death metal in the beginning. Uh, it's recorded in Morris Sound Studios, uh, and it has Scott Burns doing the, uh, the production. And you've got guest appearances from Chris Barnes of Cannibal Corpse on vocals, and James Murphy of Death, Obituary, Cancer, Disincarnate, all those bands on a lead solo. So, I mean, it doesn't get any more classic death metal than this. Um, you know, I think if you're being totally honest, this might be their most basic album or their most, you know, primitive or, you know, it's their first thing that they did. But, man, it's just got that charm that I love so much about that era of the of the genre. So they're... A lot of bands have, like, first albums that you're like, eh, they hadn't found their sound, whatever. Well, maybe Gorguts hadn't totally found their sound yet, but what a cool debut. It's just classic death metal. If your, your debut before you find your sound is a classic death metal album on Roadrunner Records with Scott Burns producing and more sound with those guest stars of Chris Barnes and James Murphy, I mean. And the other cool thing, this is 10 tracks. They already got two instrumentals. They've got an acoustic intro and they've got a full instrumental on here. Uh, just great tracks, Stiff and Cold, Disincarnated. Uh, my favorite is Inoculated Life, and if this podcast uh, goes long enough, you'll hear it. Um, it's a very cool album. I mean, I think at this point, maybe they weren't uh, blowing past everyone in the scene, although I did buy this, and I do like it, and did like it at the time, but at the time, I just thought, okay, cool, Gorgas is one of the players. They're one of the, the players on the scene, and I like this this album and I want to hear the next one. Um, little did I know that here we would be, you know, 29 years later and I'm still following the band, but uh, just a very cool release, just classic death metal. So of all of the, the different styles that they've employed, they do have one album that it just employs that classic sound of death metal. Uh, and this is clearly what I would say the, the first of their two albums that were in their first phase of the classic death metal era. Um, so there you go, coming in at number four uh, from their first era and their first album from 91, I have considered that. Um, okay. So we've just ranked six, five, and four. I've got three, two, and one. All of these for, are from each of their three eras. These are all classics. Uh, at number three, I'm going to go with their third album from 98. Uh, we've got here, we've got Obscura. Uh, makes me think that the band Obscura got their name from this album. This is their probably their most brutal, most avant-garde, most out-there album. It is 60 minutes long. It is absolutely intensely... There's nothing comfortable about this album. They don't play a single standard power chord. Everything is just weird picking, weird atonal stuff, or if there is a melody, it's just always kind of dissonant, and there's just no power chording anywhere on this. Um, this lineup, uh, this is when Steve Hurdle, the late Steve Hurdle, uh, this is the only album I believe that he's on. He, he contributes a lot of songwriting, and I believe he did some vocals on here too. But I, I gotta believe that he had a lot to do with the 
with this strange sound in here, but just the title track out of the gate, Obscura. Uh, my favorite song is Earthly Love, which sounds anything but lovey-dovey. Earthly Love is bizarre. Uh, the Colonel State Nostalgia is great. The Art of Somber Ecstasy is great. Clouded. Uh, you know, and then later on you've got, you know, Faceless Ones. Uh, this is just a, just a fascinating album. So, they had put an album out. This was uh, the first album in five years. So there was a five-year gap. They, you know, a lot of bands went through a tough time in the 90s uh, in this genre. So... They were dropped from Roadrunner, I'm guessing somewhere in 93, 94, somewhere in there. And I guess it took them a while to either A, find a record deal that they liked, or who knows what the case was. But uh, they would had this lineup in place, so they were working on this album for four or five years before it was released. So it was pretty well developed uh, by the time it came out uh, on Olympic recordings. Again, this is their first album of their second era, third album overall. Um, you know, just just as experimental and brutal and avant-garde and out there as you're going to get, and it's 60 minutes long. So it's a, it's a brutal listen, but I totally dig it, and I totally appreciate it. And this came out in 98. This was pretty much the darkest, 90, to me, 96, 97, 98, even 99, right in there was just the darkest period for all of this kind of metal. I just remember as... You know, at that point in my life, being a lot younger, I was I would basically went into 70s progressive rock at that point because it just seemed like all the, the death metal just completely just evaporated and went away. Well, Gorguts was one of the few uh, beacons of light during that time. They released this, uh, and I, I looked on, they're on Prague Archives, and they're on, obviously, Encyclopedia Metallica. Metallica and whether you're a prog fan of the band or just a death metal fan of the band, this seems to be their most popular album. So, if you like progressive death metal, this might be your favorite album by them. I don't know if it's a great place to start. Maybe it is. But, uh, so there you go. At number three, I've got, uh, from 1998, uh, their third album, Obscura. Uh, okay, coming in at, uh, at number two, uh, their fifth album from 2013. Looks like my shirt. It's called Colored Sands. Looks like that too, if you can see it. Uh, this is the beginning of their third and current uh, phase or era. Uh, this album is just art. It's just pure art, and yet it's still almost as, probably as heavy as Obscura, but it's just heavy in a different way. Um, they don't necessarily have a brutal guitar tone, but the music just hits. It's just it's just heavy. I don't know how to explain You just have to hear the strange production that they use. It's just an unorthodox uh, production. That's a James Murphy solo. You should probably... Uh, harkening back to when I said they were a classic death metal band. But, uh, yeah, I... You know, I want to make this my number one album. This album is great. You've got An Ocean of Wisdom, Forgotten Arrows, Colored Sands. Um, you also have, in the middle of this nine-song, 62-minute album, you've got a... Uh, it's a string... It's a song called The Battle of Chamdo. It's all strings, so cellos, violins, and it's composed by Luc Lemay and performed by an orchestra in Quebec. Uh, and it breaks the album basically into two parts. So you got four tracks and then this... And this string section and then the final four are even heavier and that's because this album's theme like Pleiades Dust is a historical thing on what happened in the Middle East and all in the Golden Age and how that was torn down this is a history lesson in Tibet the first half is the history of Tibet and their culture and how they you know built up all of this wisdom then there's the Battle of Chamdo which is the um, the violin section, and after that, that's basically the Chinese invasion in 1950, and what happened to Tibet after the Chinese basically invaded and took over. Uh, so just, again, heavy subject matter, and this is what's what I've noticed in their third phase. By the way, this is Obscura. This is Earthly Love off Obscura. If you're wondering how crazy and insane it is. Um, but just, just so well written. This is the new lineup with uh, Luke writing, but it's got Colin Marston on just crazy bass. He's almost like a second or a third guitar player. You've got Kevin Huffnagel on uh, guitars. You've, you've got, uh, on this album, you've got John Wong 
John Longstreet of origin on drums. Um, although Patrice Hamlin would take over as the current drummer. Um, you know, if you know anything about Colin Marston, he's an insane player. He's total out there technical, and he has his own studio, so a lot of this was recorded not only in Quebec, but also in New York. Um, just a very well-written album. This is their most well-written album. Uh, just very dense, uh, kind of like this, but in a different way. You know, Enemies of Compassion almost, to me, spells out how this this album sounds. It's brutal, but you, it's, there's a passion to it. You, you follow along with it. The songs are somewhat, you know, in a way that you can kind of follow along, but it's just a very heavy, intense album, which is why I love Gorgas. I mean, everything they do is just things you've never heard before. They definitely have the... Luke has his own distinct style, for sure. And he doesn't put out much. I mean, they've got six things going back to, you know, 30 years. Over 30 years, they have six different releases. So they don't just chuck albums out. They wait until they, you know, they make, until they find the inspiration. So, uh, there you go. Coming in at number two. I've got uh, their fifth album from 2013, Colored Sand. Which leaves me with my... Uh, my number one, I don't know if this is anyone else's uh, number one as a fan of the band, but it's mine. Because it just, I just remember when it came out and what it still means to me to this day. One of my favorite albums of all time. I never get sick of it. From 1993, look at the shirt. I've got The Erosion of Sanity. So this was their second album, 1993, uh, from their classic first era. They're still on Roadrunner here. Uh, they did not go back to Morris Sound Studios, but they did uh, have Colin Richardson, the, the legendary producer of Carcass and Eight Palm Death and all those bands. He did do the mixing on this. There's your avant-garde experimental. Um, just great. It's just eight songs, about 35, 36 minutes. It's just so blitzing. We heard uh, Condemned uh, Condem to Obscurity earlier. It came in with a synthesizer and a creepy piano thing, and then it just went into an odd drum beat and then just completely strange uh, poly rhythms and, just, and then it just got incredibly intense and blasty and thrashing. Uh, this album just, this is everything I love about that genre, uh, especially when when bands get, you know, I, I hate to use the term, but progressive. I mean, this is a progressive album. The first album was just classic, straight ahead death metal with, with cool wrinkles. They, had, they definitely carved out their own niche. But it definitely just fit in with a lot of the other bands at the time on the label. This one, I remember when this came out, I was like, whoa, is this the same band? I mean, it's the same logo, but it just sounded like a completely different band. Totally advanced, totally teched out. If you like just busy, teched out riffs all day long, which I do. Um, and again, I'm biased because I heard this when I was about 17 years old, and it just it stuck with me ever since. So clearly timing is everything, but in spite of timing, this album's great. Uh, you know, with their flesh, the will create condemned to obscurity. The title track, "Orphans of Sickness," has a cool drum pattern at the beginning. Uh, it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six, three, two, three, four, five, six. Down it, just cool stuff like that that is so influenced my songwriting to this day. Uh, Hideous infirmity. Those lyrics are incredible. A path beyond premonition. You know, ends with a, an acoustic led uh, dormant misery. Just very cool. So, so there you have it. Uh, that is ranking the albums of Gore Guts. Uh, real quick to recap, um, at, and again, all these are great. At number six, I've got their fourth album from 01. I've got uh, From Wisdom to Hate. Uh, at number five, I have their most recent release from 2016, Pleiades Dust. Uh, at number four, uh, I have their debut from 91. I've got uh, Considered Dead. Uh, also can be found there. Uh, at number three, I have arguably their most successful album. I've got, uh, from 1998, their third album, Obscura. At number two, I have their uh, fifth album from 2013. I've got Colored Sands. And at number one, uh, from 1993, I've got their second album on Roadrunner, uh, The Erosion of Sanity. So there you go. Uh, Let's see what else. If you if this is not enough for you with, with regard to Gore Guts, uh, there is a a three song EP from a band Luke and Steve Hurdle formed in that twelve year 
gap between Gorgut's albums called Negativa, and it sounds just like Gorgut's. I'm not even sure why they, they didn't just keep the name. I mean, it just sounds like literally the music that they would have made between like Obscura and Colored Sands. Kind of a mixture of that, which totally makes sense. Um, you know, what, what else can I say about, uh, about the band? They're, they're classic. Anytime I see, anytime I, I hear that a band is from Quebec, I get excited because it just seems like every time I hear bands from Quebec, uh, they're always unusual. And I love music that just is, that you cannot predict. I cannot tell you, you know, a lot of people like stuff that, that they're familiar with that they can predict. I am the exact opposite. I like stuff that surprises me. And bands from Quebec are always, they always have that heavy, progressive, strange thing going on that, that I love so much. And Gorguts is probably, I mean, could you imagine if they opened for Voivod on a concert tour? That would be incredible. Um, but, uh, so anyway, so there you have it. That, uh, that's, this is just an excuse for me to talk about a band I've been loving since high school. I have such an affinity. I always talk about the progressive bands and, you know, a lot of the classic thrash bands, but man, I can't tell you how important old classic death metal is to me or what it meant to me, uh, back in the day. And Gorgus is just part of that whole scene. And it's so cool to see them, uh, being one of those bands that still thrive, uh, today. So... Uh, so there you go. There you have it. Uh, that is ranking the albums of Core Guts. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.